Monica Quartermain rented you this place? That's right. Well, there must be some mistake. We're tax accountants. We don't make mistakes. Did you know this place was rented? Of course not. Are you sure this is the right house? Well, why do you keep questioning us? Well, because I've been looking for a place to rent myself, and uh, I never noticed a sign outside here. There wasn't one. Well, then how did you find it? It found us. You see, we're new in town, and we've had an ad in the paper under the Rentals Wanted section. And Dr. Quartermain read it and called us very early this morning. 6.27 to be exact. There's a digital clock right next to our phone. She must have stayed up all night dreaming of this one. Mm -hmm. Well, she described it so charmingly to us, we took it sight unseen. The Lord knows she offered it to us for a song. There must be some sort of tax write-off. Or kiss-off. Quite frankly, I was a little suspicious at first. But the place seemed so perfect for us. So clean. Yes, and in such good repair. Don't be so sure. As a matter of fact, uh, we're building inspectors. The building inspectors? That's right. Uh, Mr. Dawson and I are here to check out the place. Isn't that correct? That's right, Miss Brown. That's right. Uh, listen, can't this wait? We'd like to bring the rest of our stuff in. No, I'm afraid we're on a very tight schedule. But the place seems perfectly fine. Well, you can't be sure about these old places. Appearances can fool you. Especially the wiring. Oh. The wiring gives you the most trouble. Remember that old Hopkins place? Oh, don't talk about the Hopkins place. It was really a shame the landlord never rewired the place and uh, went up like that. And they were such a nice couple. They should give us a discount. We certainly eat here enough. Yes, it's interesting how we always get around to the same problem, too. Husbands. They shouldn't be a problem, but it always seems that they are. Is Grant still in that blue mood you were telling me about? Blue mood, red mood, green mood, up, down. He has, he has so many moods, I can't keep track. Maybe, maybe he's not eating right. You know, the kind of junk food people wolf down when they're in a hurry. No, 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 Holly, I don't think it's his diet. He's just moody. One minute he is the sweetest, most loving husband you could ever hope to have, and the next minute he is a million miles away. Well, shifting moods aside, you do know how much he adores you, don't you? Most of the time I do, but sometimes, sometimes I wonder. Most of the time it's pretty good. Yes, yes, I suppose it is, but, but there are times when I think he'd just rather I go away. Maybe he does feel that way sometimes. Well, thanks. But surely there are times when you want to be alone. No, no, I always want to be with him. And he usually wants to be with me, too, like today. Today was wonderful. But I don't trust it. With the way things have been going, I just know that dark mood is going to pop out again. Probably with little or no warning. Well, it keeps you on your toes. It keeps me crazy, is what it does. This is really bothering you, isn't it? Yes. I thought I knew Grant so well, but lately I don't know. All these strange mood swings. Well, Robert can be exactly the same way, believe me. Can he? Yes, he's always dashing out at all hours, and the only excuse I get is, it's work, it's important. Grant's always saying that, too. I can't tell you how annoying it is. Me, too. And then I feel guilty for getting mad. Police work can be such a strain. I suppose it's the same for doctors. Yes, I suppose. Those men deal with life and death decisions every day. That kind of pressure can really take its toll. Now you're making me feel guilty. No, don't, don't. Everybody m makes mistakes. Marriage just needs adjustments. I'm beginning to learn that. Yes, yes, but from both parties. I just wish Grant would take the time and look at things from my point of view. Oh, he will. He will. Just give him time. Oh, Holly, patience has never been one of my long suits. You should learn to cultivate it. You know, the results may surprise you a bit. Yes, I'll try, I'll try. Holly, I do love Grant. You must understand that. Oh, of course I do. Oh, it's just that life with him sometimes can be... can be so confusing.
Just a second, huh? Yeah, I got it. How much is mine? No, no, I've got it. It's all right. No, don't be silly. Polly, I insist. It is the least I can do for talking your ear off for the past two hours. Are you feeling better? Much, yes. Just talking about it it's kind of gave me a different perspective. Clearer. A little. Well, it's good to get these things off your chest. Yes, out of my mind is more like it. Sometimes if you think about things too much, it just makes it worse. You know, you're right. Perhaps I have been a bit overly dramatic about Grant's behavior. You, Celia Quartermain Putnam, overly dramatic? No. Oh, you know, I think you might know me a little bit too well, <laughs> Holly Sutton Scorpio. Well, you were never any good at covering up your emotions. No, no, that's true. And I do feel so strongly for Grant. Well, you should make the most of that. You should use it. How? Just keep on loving him. Sooner or later, he's going to open up and tell you what's bothering him, if something is. I hope so. I want to share everything with him. Sometimes men can be so darn close-mouthed. Yes, they do love their secrets, don't they? Yes, they do. And they always seem to want to save part of themselves for themselves. Well, I think that's good. I think everybody should do that. No, I don't agree with you. When I'm in love with someone, I want to know everything about them. Well, you have a lifetime to find out about Grunt. Yes, yes, I suppose. But I've known him all my life up till now, and still every single day I find out something new about him. Just the other day... Oh, no. No, he'd probably kill me if he knew I was telling you. Oh, come on. Now you have to tell me. Uh, well... We were in bed, and I was playing with, with his hair, and... You'll never guess what I found. Dandruff. No, 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 no. A scar. Oh, a lot of people have scars. No, but this was no ordinary scar. He gave me some story about a polo accident. I, actually, I thought it was kind of cute the way he was so uptight about it. Oh, dear. Men can be so darn vain sometimes, can't they? And full of surprises. All right. Um, just the way you want it. Yeah. Yeah, now, be sure to get our good side. <laughs> Listen, at your age, Luke, every side's your good side. Oh, come on. Don't let him fool you. He's got the energy of an 18-year-old. You two seem to have a mutual admiration society going. I have a great deal of respect for my worthy opponent. As I do for mine, yes. But you do disagree on the best things for the waterfront. No, we don't disagree. We, we agree on what's best for the waterfront. It's just that our, uh, our methods differ. You still opposed to gambling? I certainly am. Needless to say, I am not. Of course not. You stand to make a bundle. Not Scotty. I believe that the people of Port Charles will feel, as I do, that the tax revenues from the casino will benefit everyone. In other words, to finance low-cost housing and the child care centers and all the rest that you promised them. Absolutely. Uh-huh. And do you buy that, Mr. Baldwin? Well, I'm for low-cost housing, of course, and all of that. I just think that it would be more constructive uh, to raise the money by stimulating growth in the business community. Uh, I think my father's a lot more capable of talking about business than Mr. Spencer. I can handle this, Now, let's Scotty. just set the record straight, okay? My father is a member of every business organization in town. He has proven himself as a reliable administrator, and his law background is impeccable. Yeah, well, Luke Spencer has got experience where it counts. Oh, really? Where? Discos? Nightclubs? Gambling casinos? Well, it certainly keeps me in touch with the people. Don't give me this people malarkey. You only want to be mayor, Spencer, so you can push the gambling referendum. And I suppose your dad wants to be mayor so he can go to all those uh, cocktail parties. Oh, now, what's that supposed to mean? Why don't you ask your father, Sonny? Cool it, deal. What are you trying to insinuate here, Brock? I said that's enough. Either stop it or I'm leaving. Now, that's the best idea you had all day, Spencer. All right, and I agree with him now, Scott. Either we calm down here, we're going to call an end to this conference right now. A uh, sobering thought, lady. I said enough, Brock. All right, all right, I'm sorry. Both of us got a little bit out of line. But, uh, look, boys will be boys. Why don't we just calm down right now and have a drink? How about it, Lee? Huh? Okay, what did you have? Hey, 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 all right, come on. What are you doing? Oh, oh, oh. I haven't seen anything this bad in a long time. This place is a wreck. Well, what's wrong with it? Well, it'd be quicker to tell you what's right with it. First of all, you got termites. Can't they be fumigated? Sure, you could just let the vermin take care of them. Vermin? You know, rodents, rats, mice, that kind of thing. 
rats in this part of town? I'm afraid the rats are at home on the quarter main property. Let's see. Rotting windowsills, water leakage, and faulty wiring. The plumbing is shot. Before you take one shower, you'll be up to your knees in water. But the place looks so neat and tidy. Yeah, well, they do that. These landlords, they throw rugs on a rotten floor. They paint the kitchen some wild color so it'll distract you right from the real problem. Mark, a quarter maid should be ashamed of it. And doing it to such nice people. Well, she must have jumped for joy when she hurt you two were new in town. I because you. everyone else. Well, I know what a dump this place is. Well, no wonder she called us so early. Henry, what are we going to do? Well, there must be some way we can get out of this deal. Oh, there might be a simple solution. Did you write a check by any chance? Well, certainly. Mm. Oh, I'd stop payment on the check if I were you, but I'd do it right away. That's right. Let's go, Muriel. We'll pick up the boxes later. I don't know how to thank you. We'll mention. I'd do it for anybody. <laughs> nice work, Inspector. Same to you, Inspector. Everybody calm down now, please. What was that all about? What it was about? It's about politics. That's what it's about. Well, so much for the entertainment portion of the press conference. <laughs> I would like to apologize to Mr. Baldwin for any embarrassment that this may have caused. And I to you for any it's caused you. Thank Sounds you, Rick. Well, gentlemen, can we expect this type of fight in the coming months? No, I don't think so. I think the, uh, the tensions at the beginning of a campaign like this are, well, they're understandable. I guess we're both fortunate in having very enthusiastic campaign staffs. <laughs> Hopefully they'll all calm down after a few months of heavy campaigning. Well, now, if there are no more questions, I have work to get to. I'm sure Luke does, too. Yes, sir. All right. Thank well, you, thank gentlemen. You. Thank, thank you. you. Thank Thanks you. a lot. Pleasure to share this. Thanks very much for coming. Okay. We'll see you next uh, Tuesday. Lee, I, I, I am terribly sorry. Oh, listen, it's all right. Yeah. No, no, no. You know, it's very tense right now. It's understandable. It's not understandable to me. I mean, the whole drink thing, I really apologize. He's new in town, and I just... Okay. It's all right. Scotty? Reverse it. Brock, you knew exactly what you were doing, man. What'd you get off? Look, if you can't stand the heat, get your dad out of the campaign. Well, I'm not going to forget that. I wish you would, Scotty. No, no. You let him off now, he's going to keep this stuff up. Oh, he's a very smart boy. Oh, we've got better things to do. Goodbye. Where the hell do you get off pulling a stunt like that? Well, you didn't think I was gonna, just going to stand there and let Baldwin put you down in front of the whole press, do you? All right, come on. Why don't we just forget the whole thing ever happened? No way. I told you. No mudsling. What do you think Scotty Baldwin was doing? I can handle my own fights, thank you very much. If this is the way you're going to campaign, man, I want off the trail right now. Huh? Gentlemen, please Will you just stop on. being a fool? I'm telling you, if these are the kind of tactics you're, you're into, man, I have no intention of carrying this through. Look, just stop being a fool. You've got to know your enemy and know his weaknesses and go for it. Lee Baldwin is not my enemy. He is until Election Day. Look, there's no reason why we can't remain civilized about it. Oh, yes, there's a very good reason. Nice guys finish last. Not in my book. Well, I'm sorry. Uh, I, I'm, I'm out of this. I mean, your brother is... He's a do-gooder, and do-gooders don't win. I'm sorry, but you're wrong. I got an ace in the hole, pal, that is going to guarantee me a landslide. Oh, well, perhaps you can tell me. Perhaps I'll let you know when the time is right. Hello, Jesse. Hello, Celia. You're looking very chipper today. Well, thank you. I feel great. Is Grant around? Oh, I'm sorry. He's not back from lunch yet. Oh, darn. I wanted to check on our plans for tonight. Well, hello, Natalie. How are you? Well, I'm fine, but I'm a little surprised to see you. Grant said you weren't feeling well. Oh, well, I was a little under the weather, but I'm fine now. Oh, well, good. You have to take better care of yourself. You just got over that summer cold. I know. It's nothing, I'm sure. Celia, this is a very nice surprise. Oh, look at you. You're an absolute mess. Am I? Yes. You've got a smudge of grease here, and your hair is just wild. Oh, well, I, uh, I had a problem with some leaking transmission fluid on the way back, oh. and, and I had to stop and check it out. Oh, well, you better watch out. You're going to lose that clean-cut image of yours if you show up like that too much. He's always so fastidious about his appearance. Come on, Celia, you cut it out. But it's true. I mean, look at all the trouble you go to to disguise that headscar of yours. Celia, I'm very busy right now. Why don't you run along? 
Well, I did want to find out what our plans are for this evening. We'll do whatever you'd like. I'll meet you back at the hotel later. Okay, have that dinner in our room. Fine. That sounds lovely. Just the two of us? Uh, just the two of us. Great. Mm, don't be too late, okay? I promise. Bye. Uh, Jesse, any messages for me? No, not a thing. Uh, Dr. Putnam, could I see you for just a moment, please? Thank you. Certainly. Well, I found the vent that leads in the... How dare you say that you have Celia under control? I do. Why didn't you tell me she knows about the head scar? Natalie, what are you panicking about? She thinks I had an accident. She is a babbling fool. She's going on and on and on, and you say you have control over her. I do have control. You've got to reinstate the drugs, Grant. No. I'm warning you, Grant. Keep her under strict control. Mm -hmm. 